In the next framing segment, we'll place our iron and steel framing infrastructure. You can see in the rendering, we've placed the front posts already. And now in the center of the diagram, you'll see that we're going to place the posts and then the I-beams that connect into the post and provide the rigid diaphragm for the design. In the floor plan side of the screen here, I'm going to use the post tool. I'm going to come into the intersection and place the post right in this area. You can see it in 3D. I've changed my post defaults so they show up in red. That way when I build my wall framing, it's clear that that's a structural member. In this view, you can pull up your post. We'll just connect it up to the beam approximately. Pull it down to the foundation. And to be more precise, you could do that in a cross-section view or you could do it in an elevation view. In the dialog, I'm going to set that to 23 and a quarter. Mark that to lock the bottom, and then I'll set the top height to 342 and a quarter. Once I have that, as I zoom out, I'll use the copy tool in the lower left-hand menu, reflect about the center of that room, and then I'm actually going to use the copy and paste in place. Select that. While the object's still selected, press the center on the CAD guideline that we have. Those three posts are now po placed and if I zoom out on the 3D view we'll come in and place the other posts on the other side of the wall. I'm going to select the first post that I placed, use the copy tool, reflect that around the center of the room and then zoom in and I'll just pull that post over in place and then in the 3D view I'll simply pull this down. In this case I'm going to pull it down below the beam because I'm going to have my I-beam rest on top of that and then bear on the curved beam. Open this up. My bottom is locked and I'm just going to come in here and enter the value. Select OK and now I can select that post and use the copy tool and reflect it around the center of the room so that it places that post in the exact same position. Place three more posts on this wall and to begin with select this post down in this area use the copy tool and I'm going to slide that up to the corner and in the 3D view pull that down so that it's at the top of the beam and actually let's open that up. Bottom is locked and I'll enter in the exact dimension again using a cross-section tool you'll be able to get that exact. Select that post in the 2D view, zoom out, and I'm just going to simply copy that post, slide it up so that it's inside of the wall over here. It'll be embedded. Pull that down just a little bit and I'll zoom in over here. This is going to have a different top height. I'll pull it down, approximate value, open it up, and it looks like I actually got those values correct. Go ahead and cancel the dialog one more post. Final post along this side of the structure will support this beam and I'm going to place it on top of the lower beam to extend up. In my floor plan view I'm going to toggle up to the floor above and I'm going to just zoom right in to where that beam is positioned. Use my post tool, click and place the post and then position it. I'll just zoom in. I'm going to use my point to point move. Click on the center, sorry, the side of the post. Just come over here and snap it into place. In the 3D view, I'll just pull this up to the bottom of the eye joist and pull it down. Again, it's going to be easier to do that in a cross-section view and set your dimensions. I want to make sure that the top is at the same top, which is 288, and I believe it was a quarter. And then we'll go ahead and lock the top. And then I'll set the bottom height of that post. Those are the main posts that we need along here. Next I'll come in and put the I-beam infrastructure in place which will then allow those posts to touch the I-beam, support it, and then bear the curved beams. Next I'm going to place these I-beams in the center of the structure below the curved beams. And inside the program when we previously placed the roof beams they're intelligent and will follow the slope of the roof. In this case I want these I-beams to be completely flat and to solve that I'm going to use the floor beam tool. And I'm actually going to place those in the attic. Now the problem with placing them in the attic is when you select the tool and place one there's no floor platform. And the program is going to indicate that you want to place a general framing member instead. I'm going to cancel out of that and I've come up with a solution where I'm actually going to temporarily just place these on a floor that has a platform and then I'll move them up. So I'm going to come in and draw a beam in here. Let's go ahead and select that, open it up, and when we drew the beams in place, sorry, the posts in place, the top of the post was 288 and a quarter. With the depth locked, I'm going to go ahead and set the 
bottom height of that at 288 and a quarter. Select OK and that's going to now move that beam up into the position that I want. Now that it's in the position that I want, I'm going to press Control X on the keyboard for cut. Command X if you're a Mac user. Go up into the attic and I'm going to paste and hold position with that beam. And then I'll just kind of position it into place exactly. Snap it to the end of the wall. Snap it to the end of the wall over here. Now that I have the I-beam correctly positioned, a little bit of busy work here. Select the beam, use the Copy and Reflect tool, and we'll place it on the other side. And then I'll make another copy of the beam, and we'll just place it out here in the center, rotate it around, and then position it edge to edge on the other beam. And then using the Center tool, we'll center it right here on the line, create another copy in place, use the center tool, and then one more time, copy in place, using the center tool. I now have my framework in place, and let's see, one more beam, copy in place, just drag it down and position it in there, and then use the copy and reflect about the center. Now I have the infrastructure set up for the I-beams when we build our wall framing, and connect in here, then we'll have everything that we need. Place the lower I-beam, I'm going to position that on floor one. And on floor one, use the I-beam tool for the floor joist. Come in, position it. I'm going to select it, use the center key, center it on the post. You have to zoom in a little bit. Once that beam's positioned, the other beams would be placed uh, in the walls and on this side over here. The problem is, going to be similar to what we had on the attic. There's no floor platform. This is open to below all the way through, so there is no floor platform for that floor beam to go on. To make it easy, I'm just going to copy the existing floor beam that we had that's under the floor platform you can see in the 3D view. I'm going to make a copy of that. I'm just going to pull it over, and step one will be to position it in the location that I want for the other beam, and then pull that down in between the two posts make one more copy of that and I'm just going to pull it over here and then rotate that and I'm going to pull it over the top of the wall. Pull that down over the top of the wall, zoom in and I'll actually uh, pull that up just a little bit so that it's centered on that post. Pull it to the other edge and then copy and reflect about the center and then finally let's fix up this beam. We copied that or positioned it at a distance. Couldn't see exactly where it was and then I'll just uh, snap that to the other side. Zoom out. Actually, let's maximize our 3D view. And now you can see that we have all of our structure in place for the framework.